Good morning, dear students. Today we are starting embryology class. Pharyngeal apparatus. This pharyngeal apparatus consists of pharyngeal arch, pharyngeal cleft, pharyngeal pouch, and pharyngeal membrane. Pharyngeal arch or brachial apparatus. We already learned about the formation of the forehead. The forehead is bounded ventrally by this is the formation of the forehead. The forehead is bounded ventrally by the pericardium. This is a pericardium. And dorsally by the developing brain. Here is a developing brain. And is cranially the first are separated from the stomatidium. This space is known as stomatidium. And is separated from the stomatidium by the buccopharyngeal membrane. Here is a membrane is present that is known as buccopharyngeal membrane. This membrane is break down the foregut open to the exterior to the stomatidium. The head is separated by a bulging caused by developing brain. And the pericardium may be considered as occupying the region of the future thorax. This is a region of the future thorax. And these two are separated by stomatidium by which form the future mouth and for the neck. Pharyngeal arch or brachial arch in the fourth week of intrauteral life the neck is formed by the elongation of the region between the stomatidium and the pericardium. This is the stomatidium and this is the pericardium. This is the elongation. Series of elongation is present. That is a mesodermal thickening. The wall of the cranium most part of the forehead. This mesodermal thickening are called pharyngeal or brachial arches. This mesoderm is come to arrange in the form of six cylindrical bars. This is a coronal section of the pharyngeal arch. And this appear as a six cylindrical bars. And this bars grows ventrally in the floor of the developing pharynx. This form the fall of the floor of the developing pharynx. And this arch are numbered craniocaudally. This one, two, six. And the fifth will be disappear. The interval between the two adjoining arch. This is the first. And the second interval between the two adjoining arch, the endoderm extend outwards the form a pouch. And this wall of the pharynx, pharyngeal arch, that consists of three layers. That is inner endoderm, middle mesoderm, and the outer ectoderm. And this in between the two bar. The endoderm extend outwards in the pouch. This, this is known as pharyngeal pouch. And the ectoderm, this is the ectoderm. Ectoderm is dipped into the arch. That is known as ectodermal cleft. this figure this is a corona section through the forehead this is before appearance of the pharyngeal arch the endodermal wall of the forehead is separated by the surface of the ectoderm this is the endoderm and this is the ectoderm by the layer of the mesoderm this is the mesoderm and this outer surface of the arch is covered by ectoderm and the inner surface is lined by endoderm and the middle layer is formed by the mesoderm.
5 in the largest are rod like thickening of the mesoderm. These are that present the wall of the forehead. But there is a 6 arch. The 5th arch disappear only 5 are remaining. When the end of the arch are right and left side meet in the midline that form the floor of the pharynx. Right and left that united to form the floor of the pharynx. And the interval between the two arches. Between the two arches, the endoderm is pushed outward to form series of pouches. This this is known as pharyngeal pouches. And opposite each pouch, there is a ectoderm dip inwards in an ectodermal cleft. It is formed by the ectoderm that dipped into the inward position that is formed by the ectodermal cleft. This is a pharyngeal arch. Each pharyngeal arch containing skeletal amendments that skeletal elements, the cartilage that may be later formed by the bones, striated muscles, and that muscles are supplied by the nerves and the arterial arches. These are present the arches. component of the pharyngeal arch or such as we can see in, in a pharyngeal arch that are cartilage, muscles, nerves and artery. Cartilage become formed by bone. The muscles are supplied by nerve and its artery is also present. pharyngeal arch and this first pharyngeal arch is known as Meckel cartilage and here is arising and this derivatives of malleus, ingus, premaxilla, maxilla, zygomatic bone, temporal bone and mandible and the malleus are attached to the ligament is known as anti-ligament of malleus and these are derivatives of first pharyngeal arch there is another ligament is known as spinomandibular ligament. The spinomandibular ligament is arising from the spinospinoid and is attached to the lingual of the mandible. That ligament also the derivatives of first pharyngeal arch. And the second arch it is known as Richard's cartilage. And is derived from the stapes styloid process, lesser corner of the hyoidal bone and upper part of the body of the hyoidal bone. And the styloid process and the lesser corner of the hyoidal bone, there is a ligament is attached. That ligament is known as stylohyoidal ligament. That ligament is also derived from the second pharyngeal arch. The third arch contain greater cornua and the lower part of the body of the hyoidal bone. This is the greater cornua and this is the lower part of the body of the hyoidal bone. And the fourth and the sixth arch that containing laryngeal cartilage. The laryngeal cartilage, we you know what are the laryngeal cartilage, thyroid, record, corniculate, cuneiform, arachnoid. And here is also thyrohyoid ligament and epiglottis. Epiglottis from the mesenchyme of the hyperbrachial eminence. This is the first arch. Ingus malleus sp spinospinoid spinomandibular ligament Merkel's cartilage mandibula and the derivatives of second arch Step is styloid process, stylohyoid ligament, lesser corner, upper part of the body of the hyoidal bone. Derivatives of third arch, 
lower part of the body of the head bone in the greater corner and the sixth and uh, fourth arch thyroid cut like this the nerve of the arch each pharyngeal arch is supplied by a nerve derived from the hind brain in addition to supply the skeletal muscle of the arch and to supply the sensory branches to overlay the ectoderm and endoderm in lower animals that is supplied by two nerves that are post-termitic nerve and pre-termitic nerve the nerve of the arch is run along the cranial border that is known as post-termitic nerve and is run along the caudal border is known as pre-termitic branch in the human embryo a double innervation is seen only in the first arch there is only the double innervation we can see that is mandibular nerve that is branch of trigeminal nerve that is another nerve is derived from the first arch is called a tympanic nerve that is derived from the facial nerve that is a branch of facial nerve first arch is also known as mandibular arch the nerves are maxillary nerve mandibular nerve and caudate tympanic nerve second arch is also known as hyoid arch and is derived from the facial nerve third arch glossopharyngeal nerve and fourth arch superior laryngeal branch of vagus and the sixth arch recurrent laryngeal branch of vagus Muscles are derived from the first arch, that is muscles of mastication, that are temporalis, medial tergoda, masseter, lateral tergoda, anterior bilio diagnostic, then this uh, myelohyde tensor tympanic tensor valley palatate. These are derived from the first pharyngeal arch. These all muscles are supplied by mandibular nerve. And the second arch, that muscles are Muscles of facial expression, posterior belly of diagnostic, stylohyde and the stipidus. These all muscles are supplied by the facial nerve. And the third arch, the muscles are derived from the stylopharyngeus muscle and is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Fourth and the sixth arch, there is cricothyroid liberty palate consider muscle of the pharynx, central muscle of the larynx. These all muscles are supplied by the Vagus now, branch of vagus that is superior and recurrent laryngeal branches of vagus. Arteries that derive from the first arch maxillary artery and second arch that is hyoid and stipidal artery. Third arch is common carotid and internal carotid arteries. And the fourth arch aortic arch on the left side and subclavian artery on the right side and the sixth arch artery that is ductus arteriosus the, on the left side and the pulmonary artery that derive from the right side